What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, and in our last Kotlin video we were talking about companion objects and kind of how you would use them. We added a couple functions to our better calculator, added a zero constant and just a, a way to create a negative calculator that always has the initial value of negative 10. In this video uh, we are going to talk about um, just objects in general. So companion object is a subset of uh, the object keyword. It allows you to attach this this object itself onto um, a, a class instance. So you can only reference zero if you know that it is part of better calculator. Same thing for like negative calculator. So what we could do though is, so we have our better calculator over here. Let's say that we wanted to just have an object in general. And let's just say we call this object a calculator factory. And the whole point of this is going to be to create different calculators. So we could say val the best calculator. And we'll just say that one will be equal to better calculator and then, I don't know, 43 or 42. And then we could say val, looks like I accidentally had a space there, uh, val the worst calculator. And it can equal, um, I don't know, we have a random calculator and its initial value can be, I don't know, negative 23 or uh, yeah, negative 23. Oops, I forgot. Our, our random calculator does not allow us to, um, to create one. So we'll just leave that alone and say it will be just a random calculator. Actually, instead of calling it the worst calculator, maybe we just call it a random calculator. And then we can just say this will always just return instances of a calculator itself just so whoever is getting you know the best calculator or a random calculator they won't know that it's a implementation of better calculator or a random calculator they'll just know that they're getting a calculator and it's going to do something you know if we go ahead and remove this and then actually we don't need that anymore either and then instead of saying you know bad calculator we can say our calculator factory will give us well, a random calculator go ahead and run it and then you'll see it does it does the same thing for us runs that uh, or you know because it's like a random calculator um, so you know the best calculator give me give me that what will that do and, you know it gives us a calculator and you know my assumption is it will give us the same result every time which it does 173 both both times for the result and once we have this calculator factory set up, well, what we can kind of do, or you know, potentially do, is make this class, I don't know, protected, maybe? Eh, nah. Um, you know, if, if we try to make it private, you know, it'll allow us to do that. And then instead of, you know, val, can I do this? Equals uh, better calculator. So allows us to do that just because it, it this this is still a part of this function up here. So go figure. But what what ends up being nice though anyway um, about this is the user no longer needs to know what they're asking for, or what they need to use to create it. So we have these different calculators that are implementing an abstract calculator. All the user knows is they want a calculator, but they don't need to care about, you know, is it the better calculator or a random calculator? They just go to the calculator factory, or, you know, maybe maybe we can call it a calculator store, and then you say, I just want the best one, or I want a random one. And so that's, that's one area where you can use objects, is if you don't need any specific implementation, so we're never going to create a new instance of it, we're always going to have the same calculator store instance and, and we just know that we need to reference that to get various items. Another thing that you can do with objects though is let's say in our main function over here we want to implement a new calculator 
but we don't want to have that as uh, something that others can use. Or, or rather, let's say, you know, well, yeah, so we'll, we'll implement it over here and we'll just call it val new calculator equals, we can say object, so, and then, you know, it even, IntelliJ is smart enough to know that a new calculator is going to implement our calculator class. And then from here, we can say, here are these different things, you know, we don't have the ability to overwrite anything just because, you know, these, these ones are not open, our current value is open, so we could override that if we want, but let's just say we want to override the add function. So we come down here, we press control O, and then we go to add, and then let's say instead of you know, we can call our add function, but then let's say we're going to do super.add a second time. So we're going to add add it twice. Don't know why we would want to do that, but sure. And then for here, we'll just say result. And then our new calculator dot current value. And then we'll just say new calculator dot add two. Go ahead and run it come down to here, we get, we see we only call add once, but because we overrode the add function here, we call it, we end up calling it twice. But this implementation is only available to this single new calculator. This is what's known as an anonymous class. Uh, and it's in Kotlin, the way that you implement them is by just using the object keyword and then saying whatever you want to implement it. Now, let's say we want to extend this to our calculator store. So I'll just go ahead, I'll move, I'll move our calculator store up, and we'll just co copy and paste it over to here. And then instead of our new calculator being there, we will place it here. And then maybe just rename it to uh, double addition calculator. And here we just say, um, well, new calculator equals calculator store double addition calculator. Go ahead and run it and it will do the same thing. And yeah, so that's, that's another, another thing that you could do with, um, just this, this object keyword. So the last thing that you might use this for or just as you know, another example is for storing just constant values. So before we had our constant value of zero uh, being stored here in the better calculator, but maybe the calculator store be a, would be a better spot for that. So we say const value zero, maybe const val large negative. And we just maybe say that can proxy to int min value, and then maybe const val large positive equals int max value. And then again, we can just reference it uh, anywhere that we want. We don't need to create a new instance of a calculator store. It's already there for us. We just say calculator store dot zero or calculator store dot large negative. So that is how you would use an object. Um, there are some, some other use cases that you'll find. Uh, so instead of maybe having an anonymous class, uh, you may have a interface, which we will talk about um, in a future video. Uh, and it would be the, the same syntax as we have here, except instead of having this constructor call, you would, you would have nothing, because that's just how you would implement a interface. But you can use objects in the same way for that as well. But anyway, that is all for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell just so you're notified whenever you know I upload new videos. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.